When I was out recording moths and I discovered a moth, I was really excited because I thought I was the first person to have found it in East Lothian. But then when I looked back at the records, I found that this woman, Alice Balfour, had already caught one. And I was like, hmm, who is this Alice Balfour lady? And that led me to the museum and to seeing more of her moths. I just thought a really nice project for me to go to the places where Alice had clearly been. And I just thought it would be a really nice focus for my own moth recording in East Lothian to follow in her footsteps and see how what I find compares with what she once saw. I'm Cathy Baird and I'm a local natural historian and I also do voluntary work at National Museums of Scotland. We're at the National Museum of Flight, which is near East Linton in East Lothian, because it's close to where an entomologist who I much admire used to live. And her name was Alice Balfour. She lived about four miles probably from here. She spent a lot of time um, recording the butterflies and moths in East Lothian around her house and further afield. So she would have come to areas around the National Museum of Flight a hundred years ago looking for butterflies and moths. We hear a lot about how moth populations are changing nationally. There's big worrying declines across the country. But for me to be able to go out into my local patch, um, exactly the same places where Alice once went, and to compare what I find with what Alice once found, puts that sort of bigger data into a local context for me. Up my sleeve. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> hey. I'm Ashley Whiffin, I'm Curator of Entomology for National Museum Scotland. I adore insects um, and I have for quite a long time now, but really it's their incredible diversity, the sheer variety in their forms and their anatomy, but also all those weird little niches that they occupy. So Alice Balfour was a local Scottish entomologist based in East Lothian. And when I say local, she really did keep her entomology quite local. And this is unusual for entomologists. This area was her patch and she got to know it really, really intimately, which is what makes her and her collection that she donated to the museum so special. This one's quite nice. Yeah. A Dunbar. Dunbar, yes, Dorothy taught me this one last week. Yeah. Of the moths that Alice collected throughout her lifetime, we have about 10,000 of them here in the collection. They have been curated into the right sequence so that our visitors can come and access them, view this material, and so that ultimately it is cared for in the best possible way, and so that it can endure and the researchers well into the future can continue to study her specimens. We also gained her archives, and this includes her field diaries, her notebooks, her catalogues, and they are equally as important as her specimens because they contain yet more information, more records of moths in the local area. So we can gain the same sort of information from these, such as the species that she was getting in her local patch, and compare that with what Catty is finding in the area nowadays. What you also gain from the diaries is a sense of Alice as an individual, as a person, because she's not just listing species there, she's also making notes about the weather, about her day-to-day. -day. I think she must have been known as the local moth lady. Like um, you. Like me. <laughs> so people would come um, and give her specimens that they'd found. So I feel like I connect with Alice on a personal level. Being a fellow woman in entomology, I really feel quite inspired by the work that she did and the contributions that she made, because it would have been quite challenging at meetings, at entomological gatherings, being probably one of just one or two women in the room. And I have experienced a little bit of that in the early days of my career, but I've also been really fortunate to have many female role models, like through my studies and through my career. So I think about how difficult and different it must have been for Alice, and it just makes her achievements even more impressive. Being out looking for insects, looking for moths or any insect, or any wildlife actually, definitely is, is good for my soul. Um, so there's, there's definitely a mental health benefit to me. There's always something there. It could just be an ant or a, a fly or something, but there's always something to watch. It's just sitting in a spot like this yeah. and just zoning out and watching them for the movements. And then that's when you notice those cool behaviours, those species that you haven't maybe appreciated before. And then you really can just tune out everything else. Yeah. And that is quite meditative. 
So here at the National Museum of Flight, we're, we're surrounded largely by um, agriculture. But in between that, there's some really valuable habitats for wildlife. There's um, bits of woodland, there's areas of um, grassland which are not managed so intensively. And at the Museum of Flight itself, uh, there's work starting to be done to improve the biodiversity by leaving areas uncut and allowing the wildflowers to grow. Having wild spaces left for wildlife is really important and anyone can contribute to that. It's just noticing the little things, so noticing nature, paying closer attention to insects, maybe documenting the moths that you see. If you find a moth in your garden, take a photo of it. There's a great variety of wildlife recording apps available now, so you can actually turn your observation of a moth uh, into a scientific record, which is really exciting because then that record can actually contribute to conservation. The other thing that we can all do is make those small changes to how we manage our green spaces. So if you're lucky enough to have your own garden, think about leaving a portion and giving it back to nature because we don't really need to be so neat and tidy. But don't worry if you haven't got a garden. I don't have a garden myself. If you can have a window box or potted plants, there's all these small positive changes that we can make. It's really important that we continue to care for and curate these collections. There's a huge amount of information and knowledge that we can gain from these specimens because every single label on these moths contains information about where and when Alice collected them. So what that's going to enable us to do is actually use that data to study changes in these distributions of these species. We can use the collection as a window to the past so we can see where moths occurred 100 years ago and compare that with data now to see how things are changing. So Alice's collection and our collection of over 2 million insect specimens is housed here at the National Museum's Collection Centre in the north of Edinburgh and it is open to anybody that wants to come and view the specimens in the collection from entomology students to researchers, local naturalists and also artists. If in a hundred years from now I can have half as much impact as Alice, I will be pretty pleased with that. It would be really nice to be able to meet Alice Balfour in person. It would be really lovely to sit around a moth trap at night um, talking about the insects that we're seeing and um, comparing our different experiences. Through all my research looking into the butterflies and moths that Alice caught, looking at her collection at the museum, and then when I'm out and about on my own moth hunting expeditions um, in, the, in the same areas that Alice once would have walked with her net, um, I do feel a, a connection to her. Um, it's, it's really nice to, to think that I'm following on from somebody else who was doing the same sorts of things that I was doing a hundred years ago.